Thank you. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. I am a Nazi. An American Nazi. I'm proud of it. I do not rant. I do not rave. I do not strut. But I do have great fears for this great nation of ours. Fear that we are slipping into anarchy. Our women are not safe on the streets of our cities. Our children, too many of them garbed in the costume of the hippie, are now entitled to vote. You and spiritual concept is needed. One that rises from the hearts of those who want purity in their movies. A removal of the colored from the welfare roll. And a return to law and order. These are the goals of the new Nazi American movement. <laughs> hospital near Pittsburgh, the boss told me. A government agent has escaped from the mental ward there and he's made an attempt on the life of Kurt White, the leader of the new Nazi America movement. For me, it was a heartbreaking assignment because this particular agent had taught me my job. The agent had been almost like a father to me. But when the boss tells you to do something, you do it whether you like it or not. You know how nicely you've been coming along, Mr. Nash. How did he get out of here? He, he gave me a karate chop. Wham, I thought it was broken. I, I never suspected anything. I liked the guy, too. Yeah, well, he must have liked you. You're still alive. This sudden outburst of violence is a dire indication of acute regression, Mr. Nash. He's a very dangerous man. Doctor, he was a very dangerous man before he came down with acute regression. And this obsession with White and his new Nazi movement. Obsession? Doctor, maybe it's because he can still hear the cries of the victims who were prisoners in Buchenwald. Well, let's hope the police find him. No chance. He's robbed a gun shop. He's stolen a pistol with plenty of ammunition. He's stolen a car three days ago. They just found out that it was missing. Excuse me, doctor, but uh, if he doesn't want to be caught, he won't. Please try to get to him before he gets to White, Mr. Nash. Maybe he'll listen to you. Thank you, doctor, for your concern, both of you. But you don't understand, doctor. You see, my job is to protect white. As you all know, I met a short while ago with a group of American industrialists. I've asked for and will receive their support. We can now go on with our work, secure in the fact of our growing strength and eventual triumph. Corporal, dismiss the men from organized duties the rest of the day. Dismiss! White had moved steadily ahead all over Pennsylvania with his new Nazi garbage. He no longer occupied parks or sleazy rooms. And he'd found himself a real pigeon. FX Rourke. 400 million bucks, a barrel chest and a pinhead. And politics that was on a sewer level. Rourke had given White and his idiot followers the use of his country estate. With money bags Rourke backing him, 
White could emerge into a genuine menace if Ross didn't get to him first. Who are you? My name is Montgomery Nash. Are you here to arrest me? <laughs> no, that's not your problem. Oh. Do I have a problem? You've got one of the biggest problems you've ever had. The man named Carter, he's gunning for you. Who's Carter? He's a professional killer. He's the one that took a few uh, playful shots at you the other day. Now, what's he got against me? You're a Nazi. He hates Nazis. It's open season, anywhere, any place. Are Nazis for Carter. Tell me something, you sucker. How does it feel to have the best gunning for you? You're impertinent. That's right. And I'm big enough and I'm tough enough to back it up, all right? Tell me something. How did you get rich man Rourke to pull along with you, huh? You must have some line of bull. Mr. Nash. I am not amused. Listen, you. I'll protect your miserable life and your right to free speech. But I don't like it. And I don't like going up against Carter unless I get some information about this place. My life is in danger, too. Now, where are your men? And how many do you have posted? Yes. This is Ross Carter. Who? Ross! It's me, Monty Nash! It's no joke, Mr. Nazi. The name is Carter, Ross Carter, and you remember it because I'm coming for you, mister, and I'm gonna get you before you know it. Ross! Ross! Well, I warned you. Now I have to go out there and try to find him. When I find him, you better call your men off and leave me with him alone for 15 minutes. Ross? Can you hear me? Freeze, Ross. All right, now lower your arm. Turn around slowly. Marty, it is you. I almost killed you. Almost doesn't count. One of the first things you taught me. Hey, what is this? You, uh, are you trying to work my beat? Uh, you know me better than that. Good, then. You climb aboard. We'll be like old times again. Only if you draw a beat on White, you just wing him. You understand? I got plans for him. You remember that sergeant uh, back there in Orleans who was attacking those little girls? Yeah. <laughs> hey, you look great. Ross, listen. You look great. Last time I saw you, it was just a kid. That's why I didn't recognize you, you know? No, no, the last time you saw me was three weeks ago in the hospital. I visited you once a month for almost a year. You visited me? Where? What are you talking about? You've been ill, Ross, for some time. You know that. What, are you joking? No, I'm not joking. I've come to take you back. Well, I can't go, Monty. I got a job to do. You know, that, that Nazi pig is not going to hang around here forever. You've been out of circulation for over 18 months. It's not your job anymore. I got my orders, Marty. And I've got mine. Ross, you're a very sick man. Yeah, yeah. One of us is sick. Look, why don't we, uh... Why don't we just talk this over later, eh? We'll go down there and stir a few things up. Now, right now. Come on, let's go. By whose orders? Same as always, the man. 
Come on, Mark. What's happening to you, boy? Ross, you've been out of touch. I know how to deal with snakes. Yeah, well, we've been given orders to let them wiggle around a little bit. Now look, Marty, there's nothing wrong with me. Well, I got a job to do, and I know how to do it. So why don't you put the weapon down, huh? No way. Come on, let's go. And if I don't? You will. Another thing you taught me, never argue with a man who's pointing a gun at you. <laughs> yeah, that's right, I did. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're right, Marty. I particularly like your concept for the future of our country, mister. Like your name, Mr. White. You see, I'm a poor boy, raised on a farm. Worked my way up, all the way up to the top. And that's your perception, Mr. Roof. And it's quite correct. You see, working your way up from the farm, as you did, just as he worked himself up from a house painter, has taught you, has taught you to be snowed by one of the slickest bums I've ever seen. You're Mr. Rock, aren't you? Tell me something. Do you really have $400 million? Listen, young man. What are you doing here? I told you. Ross Carter. I'm not going to tell you again. I know. Ross Carter is determined to kill me, right? Who is this Ross Carter? And why does he do want to kill you? He's lost his sense of humor. I'm not afraid to die. Oh, really? Is he speaking for you, Mr. Rowe? Nobody speaks for me. Well, then you'd better listen. There's a man out there, a great man, and he's gone off as rocker because he can't seem to forget what the Nazis did to him and millions of other people during World War II. You do remember World War II, don't you, Mr. Rowe? Now, the Constitution of the United States guarantees you two bums the right to say anything you want. Now, I'm here because someone wants to deny you that right. You got it? But beyond that, Ross Carter is a friend of mine, and he's a killer. And because of my protecting you, I may wind up dead. So, not being a foolish man, you're going to do this my way. Is that understood? You should judge me, Mr. Nash. Just as you misjudged what I stand for. If you'd open your mind, You'd see that, you'd see that I, I represent the future. And that if I'm killed or sacrificed, my followers will continue on in my path. We are going to be a mass movement. Wait and see. You stupid jerk. I can't get through to you, can I? Hmm? Listen. Do you hear a sound out there? Really listen. Any sounds? All posts reporting. I said all posts report in. Who six report? That's right. Not a sound from any of your great hunters out there. And depending on Ross Carter's mood, I would say that they are either unconscious or dead. Which means that you're just as good as dead without having to be laid out. Now, have I finally gotten through to you? Perfectly. Perfectly. But I have told you that I am not afraid of death. And if I am killed or sacrificed on the altar of governmental entry, the new Nazi American movement will go on. My followers are going to pick up the banner that I have dropped. You see, Mr. Nash, I believe in my cause enough to die for it. What are you doing? Roll away, Frank. Get your hands off. Get your hands off. Get your hands off. I'm gonna have you, miss! What's going on? I 
I gave him 10 seconds to get in there and get you out, or I was going to lob a grenade in there. They obey orders pretty good. Don't make no difference who gives it to him. Lisa Bray without that weapon. No, I wouldn't, baby. You just shut up and stay put. You sure had me, Captain. Yeah. You even had me begging you to kill me. Mad, I've done nothing to you. That's because you haven't got the chance, and you're not going to get it. I'm going to see to that. I'm going to kill you, White. I'm going to wipe you off the face of the earth. Ross, I don't do something that you can't undo. Are you still around, huh? Yeah, I'm still around. You've got one break. Don't you look for another. You, that guy was Ty. Tie his hands behind his back. Now, wait a minute. Shut up! No speeches, no interference. I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to execute your leader here. Clean, fast, and decent. Any of you uh, dedicated iron men want to join him? No? All right, then get out of here. Go on. <laughs> Get over here. Turn around. Is there anything you want to say before you get it? Only that I have the utmost contempt for you and everything you stand for. You are breaking my heart. Go ahead, shoot! Get it over with! No, you keep out of this. Ross, you kill this guy, you'll stay in that cell for the rest of your life. Cell? Yeah, cell. You know what you're doing? You're taking revenge on something that someone did to you some 25 years ago. Don't kill this guy. I'm getting rid of dirt. Ross! Is it me you're talking to? All right. All right. Go ahead, kill him. You want to kill him, kill him. Go ahead! You can't do it, can you? You want to know why you can't do it? Because you, you know there's something wrong. There's something evil inside of you. You know there's something wrong. Now, Ross, get back. Let me take you back with me to the hospital, huh? Come on. They'll help you. You don't want to kill this guy. He wants you to do it. You know why? Because they'll make a martyr out of him. That's right. They'll build him up from the clown that he is now. And they'll make him a martyr. Now, don't let that happen. Don't let that happen. Marty. Can I trust you, Marty? You can trust me. Yeah, the hospital, yeah. I was in a, in a, the hospital. That, that's the truth, isn't it? 
Yeah. I remember that outside. I hurt somebody in there, happy. Yeah, I, I, you know, I hurt him. Well, he's not mad at you. I can't. I remember, I remember, I hurt him. I gotta be pretty sick here, Marty. I am, aren't I? Well, let's say right now you're getting better by the minute. for the guy, even though you know it's just a matter of time before he'll be batting him out again. As for White, he was on TV news the other day during one of my visits to Ross. Ross was laughing, and I knew he was over the hump, because idiots like White would never bother him again. <laughs> 